What's going on, everyone? Welcome to today's pandemic update for Tuesday, May 16th, 2023. Hopefully, everyone's staying safe and healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. All right, taking a look at India, some good news. India cases continue to fall. 656 new cases have been reported in the last 24 hours. And only just 12 deaths now. Sadly, that is another 12 deaths. But luckily, we have not seen a massive death increase from this wave in India. Moving on to our next story. And this pretty much is something, it's not just happening in Canada. This story comes out of Canada. It's something that's happening in Canada, the United States, and around the world. ER Physicians Letter Describes Crisis at Surrey Memorial Hospital that's leaving patients suffering. And if we come down here, it does say that more than 35 emergency physicians at the hospital backed the page-long letter that says patients are suffering, in some cases dying in hallways, as a result of steadily worsening problems. We have been repeatedly sounding the alarm to our regional and provincial leaders that these alarms have been ignored, read the letter dated Friday and obtained by CBC News. Additionally, these conditions have been poorly and incompletely communicated to the public. We feel that patients and public deserve honesty, Fraser Health has repeatedly told ER physicians to not openly discuss our challenges. And it goes on to say their challenges such as ERs being packed, patients waiting in the hallways. Yes, this is still happening. It's not just happening here. It's happening at places all over Canada, all over the U.S., all around the world. The heavy burden of patients on the hospitals has not ended. Why? The hospitals prior to the COVID pandemic were already at a heavy load. You add on the fact that there are still COVID patients, and it's just pushing them over the limits. You add on the fact that there is now long COVID and post-COVID conditions, and it is really straining the hospitals. And I think people fail to understand that, because I often hear people say, I had to go to the hospital for such and such issue. Man, the ER was slammed. I had to wait for hours and hours. They had trouble finding me a room. Hello, the strain on the hospitals has not ended. Hospitals are still getting crushed by COVID. And in some cases, you're going to see later on in this video, in some places, admissions are starting to inch upward again in the United States. I'll show you where that is later on. See if you can guess where that is. Moving on to our next story. CDC finds skin infection never before seen in the U.S. in New York City. The recently emerged infection found in New York City is described as a drug-resistant fungus that has caused severe skin infections. So yet another uh, illness that has popped up. We just had one, when was it, Sunday? I think I reported on the mysterious illness in Africa. And already, here is another one. And it's sounding like it's similar to uh, ringworm. And New York City patients have experienced lesions on their neck, abdomen, buttocks, and thighs according to the CDC report last week. So this is something we're going to have to keep an eye on to see if more cases of this pop up. And if we find out more information on this, we will let you know in future updates. Moving on to our next story. Look at this. COVID-19's total cost to the economy in U.S. will reach 14 trillion, not billion, not million, 14 trillion by the end of 2023 new research shows. And yes, this has been a very expensive pandemic. A lot of people have downplayed the pandemic from the start. Many pe different people said, oh, it's not that big of a deal, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the fact that it has cost us $14 trillion, that is a huge deal. And as you know, uh, TikTok, TikTok, the United States has a debt default issue potentially coming if nothing is acted on within the next month. And the fact that we're continuing to have to spend all this money on the pandemic, of course, not as much now that the emergency has ended, but it just shows us how expensive this pandemic has been. Moving on to this next story, I thought this was very interesting, but not our most interesting story of the day. Let's get to this one first. Proposal to study Pennsylvania's COVID-19 response in State House. I would have to think that uh, this is heavily Republican-backed, but 
No, it's actually coming from a Democratic side as well. Let's read this story. Harrisburg, PA. Since the start of the pandemic, Pennsylvania has seen nearly 3 million confirmed cases of COVID-19. Now Democratic state rep wants to study the state's response to the virus. He's proposing a study that would evaluate how emergency responders, healthcare systems, schools, and government agencies reacted and what they could have done better. The study would look at things like masking, closures, stay-at-home orders, and financial hardships. And I will say this. Our state had, for the number of cases that we had, we've had nearly 3 million cases. We did have quite a few deaths during uh, waves of COVID compared to what we were seeing in cases. There was a huge problem with testing in uh, rural Pennsylvania. Either people did not want to get tested or access to testing was not easy to come by. And because of that, we missed a lot of cases at the first and even second year of the pandemic. Also, number two, rural Pennsylvania had a huge masking problem. I would say at least half the people in rural Pennsylvania refused to wear a mask. They just thought, oh, it's a bunch of nonsense. I don't need to do this. My freedoms and liberties. It was bad. If you were reading the comment sections of any story from rural Pennsylvania news agencies back in 2020 and 2021, it was utterly ridiculous. And we know masks saved lives, but people refused to take that measure. All right. This is our most interesting story of the day. I'm going to repeat this twice. Governor Abbott, you know, the governor of Texas, the Republican governor. Governor Abbott renews COVID-19 disaster declaration in May of 2023. In case you didn't understand what I just said, Governor Abbott renews COVID-19 disaster declaration in May. That's right. While everyone else is ending theirs, he decides to renew it. Surprise, surprise. Who would have expected this? And this is legitimate. I did not see this coming. I don't think anybody saw this coming. And I think one of the reasons for this is because of the border crisis with people coming across the border. Maybe he's concerned about uh, COVID coming in that way. But very interesting. Because we know Greg Abbott, while he's not as extreme as Ron DeSantis when it comes to downplaying COVID, uh, we know he didn't take it as serious as other states. So I guess it's some good news. It's it's some surprise news, if you ask me. Alrighty, Walgreens did have an update this week. Current week's positivity is 25.4%. Prior week is 24.4%. Difference of up 1%. We do have one piece in this day in pandemic COVID history. May 16th, 2022. Researchers from Brown University School of Public Health, Brigham and Women's Hospital, and Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health estimate that approximately 50% of COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. were vaccine-preventable deaths. And remember, that's from May 16th of 2022. Wastewater remains flat across the country. Nothing really to show you here on the CDC wastewater map. Taking a look at the latest variants of COVID. XBB 1.5, 64%. XBB 116, 14.3%. XBB 191, 9.2%. XBB 192, 4%. XBB 2.3, 3.5%. XBB 151, 2.4%. And FD.2 is 1.8%. Reminder, we will get an update on these variants on Friday. So as long as we do get that, it's important that you subscribe down below so we get that information out to you. Moving on to this, BNO had their weekly update. We did not get to do that yesterday. Here's what it was for last week. New cases, there were 76,183 reported cases last week. Remember, that does not include all 50 states. It says only 49. And that doesn't necessarily include all the reinfections or all of the at-home tests. Most at-home tests do not get reported. The average is 87,612. That's down by 7,521. As stated, only 49 states out of 50 last week. The hospitalization number is below 12,000. 11,998. It dropped by 95 last week. In the ICU was up by 2, 1,631. And 1,015 deaths were added last week. The average is 1,209. That is down by 98. New Jersey today has 100 people in the hospital, 3 people in a ventilator, 11 people in the ICU, and cases today 
are much higher than yesterday. You will see here that today's cases in New Jersey, if it decides to come up here, it is 161 confirmed cases and 133 probable cases and just one death. So not a big increase in deaths, but uh, cases compared to yesterday are up significantly. Moving on to this now, uh, Philadelphia, this is my city, 738 EMS incidents yesterday, slightly higher than the previous day, but uh, lower than what we were seeing over the weekend. And some sad news. Remember how I was showing you Center County, Pennsylvania? You know, Mount Nittany Medical Center, the only hospital there. Their COVID dashboard has ended, so we will no longer be taking a look at that product. New York State. They had 379 new cases, 2.4% positivity. The seven-day average is 1.8%, so today's average, today's positivity is higher than the seven-day average. Alrighty, taking a look at hospitalizations, some bad news. New York State hospitalizations, they're starting to rise again. 581 people in the hospital, 60 people in the ICU, and there's something else we want to take a look at here. Let's take a look at the admissions in New York State. Yeah, they're starting to rise as well. 256 emissions on the most recent update. That includes multiple days. That is the highest number in one month. Taking a look at New York City, and we'll do emissions and hospitalizations there as well. In New York City, they're starting to inch higher as well. 93 admissions, and the hospital report number, that is slightly higher as well. 203 people hospitalized. Uh, 23 people in the ICU, and that is a relatively decent-sized increase. It's 181 versus the new update, which is 203. We'll have to see what happens as the week goes on. We know XBB 116 is increasing in New York City. Taking a look here at some international data, let's refresh this in case any country has updated. And internationally, cases are down 38%. Deaths are down 45%. Again, that's just an estimate. That number could potentially be flawed or wrong. So don't take these numbers literally, but it does give us a good idea of what's going on in the rest of the world. South Korea, cases are up 18%. Deaths are up 62%. France, cases down 23%. Deaths are down 38%. Russia, cases down 28%. Deaths are down 16%. Vietnam, cases down just 1%. Deaths, they only had four in the last seven days. Philippine cases are still rising at uh, 30%. And a note on the Philippines, there was uh, portions of Malena, I believe that's where it was, where uh, mask orders are going back into effect, where you are required to wear a mask again in public places. Italy, cases down 50%, deaths down 63%. Malaysia, cases up 13%, and deaths are up 125%. Austria, cases are down 22%, deaths are down 68%, and finally ending on Thailand, cases are up 39%, deaths are up 120%, 22 deaths versus 10 deaths. Alrighty, that does it for today's pandemic update. The next video you'll see on the channel will be tomorrow's pandemic update. Until I see you again next time, I need you to do a couple things. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, Subscribe to my channel down below. I will see you all again next time. But until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a great afternoon.